All right, so conjugated dyings here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the different types. Uh, the main one we're going to be concerning ourselves with is this type. <clears throat> it's where we have the double, single, double. Uh, that's referred to as being conjugated. So, so conjugated. <clears throat> Uh, whenever you have a situation like this where the system is conjugated, it works out where the pi bonds, uh, basically these two bonds here, the actual pi bonds, the ones that are going out of the plane, uh, they happen to be parallel to each other. So we say the pi bonds are parallel. Uh, the reason why that's significant, it allows electrons to move back and forth along the entire molecule, and it does have an effect on their reactivity. Um, but before we get into that, there, the other types, this kind is where they're isolated. So isolated. Uh, notice here we have uh, carbon there in the middle, sp3. Uh, recall from last semester we did resonance problems. We can't do resonance through an sp3 carbon. That's like a stopping point because it already has a full octet. And if it were to lose any electrons, it would be a bond breaking, and then and therefore it's not actually a, a resonance, it's a reaction then. So no resonance between the two pi bonds here. And the last case, which is actually not super common in organic compounds, is this one. And this is where they are accumulated or adjacent. So you can say accumulated. And it works out with this one here, the pi bonds are orthogonal. Probably like never see that word again, right? What does orthogonal mean? Perpendicular, right? <clears throat> but we gotta use fancy words, Verno Kim. <laughs> Let me zoom out a little. Autotune's waking out too. Oh my gosh. That's really washed out now. That look okay on that screen? I can't see that screen from here. All right. Uh, it turns out there are other types of conjugated systems. So other systems. These are also referred to as being conjugated, uh, basically because of how the pi bonds work out. And we have the allylic. radicals or carbocations, and then additionally we have benzylic. And the same thing here, we have carbocations and radicals. Notice here it's one away from the, and I will write the names of these again. All right. So uh, here, if it's one away from a double bond, that's vinyl. Sorry, allylic. Vinyl is when it's directly on the double bond. And then this case where it's one away, this is benzylic. And if it's straight on the ring, it's, it's phenyl. Okay. So it turns out that these uh, particular types of carbocations or radicals, they are resonance stabilized. And the reason why they're able to undergo resonance is because of the way the pi bonds are sitting. So I'm actually going to draw out the orbitals for this one and see how it looks. So carbon, carbon, carbon. And then I'm going to draw my H's in. H, H, H. So this one at the end only has two H's and I'm drawing the carbocation, not the radical like that, and then we have our pi bonds, which I'm gonna go ahead and use some color for them. Okay, so going back to this carbon here, what is the hybridization on this carbon at the end? SP2, which means that it has, so it has th uh, three bonds, hybrid bonds are sigma bonds, 
those are FP2 orbitals, and then what is left over is a P orbital. Uh, and normally when we have this kind of hybridization, that, that extra P orbital is involved in a pi bond, um, but in this case, it's sitting empty. So I want to mention here that this orbital is empty. And because all the pi bonds are parallel, electrons can freely move back and forth along all of these. And that's how we're able to show the resonance. We've been showing it so far as just pushing an arrow over like that. And then our arrow pushes go like this. All right, are there any questions about this so far? I, if, if I were to do an orbital drawing like this, I would uh, draw it for you and ask you to label it, if I ever do that. Yeah, in the past, I used to have students draw that, and it was pretty bad drawing that I got, so. I would study it, though, because you have to understand things about it, but I wouldn't necessarily make you draw it. It's not a drawing class. I don't test you on your drawing ability. All right, so uh, what I wanted to go over now is a... Uh, Addition reactions with uh, dienes, it's a little bit different than what we've seen before. There is a lot of similarities though. So let's say addition to dienes. And we were specifically talking about the ones that are conjugated. Isolated dienes will react the same way as your other diene that we saw last semester. Okay. So here we have, this is one three butadiene, one comma three butadiene. And I'm gonna go, go ahead and show a reaction with HBr. All right. On this part of the reaction does not matter, but um, if you did have an asymmetric Dying, you'd have to think about which one would give you the most stable, most stable carbocation. And you always want to make sure that your carbocation, the plus charge is one away from a double bond rather than the other way because if you have it one away from a double bond, that's going to give you additional resonance, which remember, resonance gives stability. So either double bond works here. Nucleophilic attack. Notice how I have the arrow coming from the pi bond and not from one of the atoms. It's coming from the bond just like what we saw with the Grignard reaction earlier. All right, let's draw this here. So uh, here we have a carbocation, which you, you could then show undergo re undergoing resonance. Like that. And let's go ahead, oh, there should be a plus, there should be a uh, resonance arrow, sorry. Resonance, and then we get the other like that. Remember that we have a new H over here, right? So, okay, the reason why this is different than what we've seen before is that either one of these carbocations can lead to a product. And which carbocation goes to the product is temperature dependent. So, I want to go ahead and show both, and then we'll go ahead and talk about the temperature dependence. All right, so first, for both of them, just like we saw last semester, your bromide ion is still floating around a solution. And I'm putting my lone pairs on there just to be thorough today. All right, so nucleophilic attack on the carbocation. I just wanna be clear, this is not concerted. That's just, that's the resonance arrow here. That's not part of the reaction arrow. All right, and then we draw our products. Would this compound be racemic? It would. Yeah, if we have a carbocation intermediate that, that is a chiral center, it would be racemic. But I'm not too worried about that right now. We're worried more about regioselectivity right now, not stereoselectivity. All right, we get that. 
Okay, the, the two way we talk about these uh, products here, I'm gonna go ahead and label these carbons. I'm gonna number it backwards here, just because uh, the double bond between carbons one and two is what reacted. So if you look at the relative position of the new groups here, the H and the BR on this one are in the one, two position. You guys see that? So carbon one has it, carbon two has it. So we call this the one, two addition product. This one has the new H at one and the BR that four. This is the one, four addition product. So one, two addition. This one is one, four addition. All right, uh, we, we also have other names for these. Um, out of the two of them, uh, which one is the more stable alkene? The one, two, or the one, four? One, two. So how do we determine alkene stability again? Substitution. substitution. Which one is more substituted? Not, not the bromine. You're not, you're not looking at substitution on the bromine. You're looking at substitution on the alkene. So this is mono-substituted. This one's di-substituted. This one is more thermodynamically stable because it has a more stable alkene. So we're going to call this one the thermodynamic product. So thermodynamic product. And then this one, uh, we're going to see here in a moment that this one actually forms faster. Uh, and you could think of it, that's the first uh, resonance form that appeared. It went straight to the product. That's technically faster. So this one is kinetic. Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the energy diagram of this, and we'll use that to help explain exactly what is happening. So you, we did see an, an energy diagram on the last test. You should have seen this stuff last semester as well. So on the y-axis, we have delta G, or just energy. And then on the x-axis here, we have the reaction coordinate. The other uh, word we can use for reaction coordinate is reaction progress. Okay. So here we have our starting point, and I'm going to go ahead and draw the compounds on here. So there is our diene that we started with, an HBr. Okay, we have a energy of activation here and then an intermediate. So just to review here, how did I know there was going to be an intermediate a middle bump here? How did I know I was going to have that? What's that? <clears throat> so, um, each one of these bumps corresponds to an energy of activation for a step in the mechanism. So if, you're, if your mechanism has two steps in it, you have two bumps. Your carbocations are intermediates. So here we have our carbocation, and I'm going to go ahead and draw the allylic carbocation, and I'm going to draw it as its resonance hybrid, because this is in resonance. So it works out that we have a delta plus on this carbon, delta plus on this carbon. So once again, to uh, remind you guys, intermediates go here in the valleys here, and then the peaks are our transition states. So these are the that double dagger symbol, and we'll call it one and two. Okay. Uh, generally, uh, what happens here is you could think about uh, the stability of the actual carbocation that's forming. So if you look at the two carbocations, let's, go, let's, back, let's back pedal a little bit. So I'm just going to pull this down. Let's go ahead and take a look at these carbocations. Out of these two carbocations, which one do you think is more stable? The left or the right one? So they're both allylic. So the only thing difference between them is that one is secondary, one is primary. Do you guys see that? So which one is more stable? The secondary one, the one on the left. This one is more stable than this one. 
However, it leads to the less stable product. So the second step of the reaction is the difference here. So because this, this particular intermediate uh, forms more readily, the activation energy to get to this product is lower. So this one forms faster. So I'm going to go ahead and call this first reaction here the 1-2 one, re re path. So this will be for our 1, 2. And then our product here that formed was this one. Like that. So the other, car uh, the other carbocation, it's higher energy because it's primary. Still a little though, so it still can form. But what ends up happening is the second step here has a higher energy of activation than the 1-2 reaction. So this is going to jump up higher. However, the final product is more stable, so it's lower energy. So this goes down below this one, like that. So what ends up happening is uh, to get to the less stable product, it's easier because you have a more stable intermediate. It takes more energy to get to the more stable product because you have a less stable intermediate to get there. So this is the path to the 1, 4 product. 1, 2, 3, 4, double bond is now here. And that is the 1, 4 product. Okay, so uh, the way that we can make sure that we get one product or the other, uh, because the formation of 1, 2 requires less energy overall to get there, we can ensure that that one forms by turning down the temperature. So one HBr cold would lead to this one, HBr hot would lead to this one. So I do want to add cold and hot. Okay, did that make sense? And you probably got to process all this a little bit. But the basic idea is that the first step is the same. You get a carbocation forming. And then how we get to the second part, the final product, is different. One second, Vince. <clears throat> so just to reiterate here, to get to the more stable product here, we have a higher energy intermediate, so there's a higher energy of activation here. To get to the less stable product, the intermediate is more stable, less energy to get there. Go ahead. So if it's colder hot enough, you can guarantee it's one or the other? Yes. So typically, uh, when you see these problems, uh, the, the, that will specify hot or cold. If, if it's not specified hot or cold, you should show both. And to specify one, two versus one, four. Okay, so I have some, uh, some additional practice problems here to take a look at. Uh, it turns out that your other addition reactions also work with dienes, and any of the ones that have uh, intermediates may shuffle their intermediates around to get to two different products. It, it does work out to be 1, 2 versus 1, 4, however. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the addition of Br2. So once again here, we're going to go ahead and <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> start with 1,3-butadiene. I want to try this reaction two different ways. I want to do it with Br2 and then another one, Br2 in water. And we'll see how this looks. All right, Br2. The 1,2 product would put a bromine here and here. This is the so-called 1,2 product. Is that kinetic or thermodynamic? So the 1, 2 is kinetic. You can use that to help you remember about the transition state theory stuff that we just talked about. Go so ahead. Always do that. So one, two, yeah, 1, 2 is always kinetic. 1, 4 is always thermodynamic. All right, so let's write this in here again. This is the kinetic product. Forms faster, has a more stable intermediate. The next one here. The 1, 4 product puts the d bromine on the ends, like that. This was the 1, 4 product. 
also called the thermodynamic product. To get to the 1, 2 product, this should be cold. To get to the thermodynamic product, this should be hot. I guess I should have wrote that in blue. Let me fix that. <laughs> Just to emphasize it there. So basically, do you run it? Do you run this reaction in an ice bath or do you run it in a reflux? That's basically the difference in, in the, from a lab perspective. All right, let's go ahead and try the same reaction with Br2 and water. In predicting this type of product, I recommend, at least for most of these, you want to start with the 1, 2 prediction, and then from there, go to 1, 4. And the reason why I recommend doing it this way is because the 1, 2 addition is just like we saw last semester. No residence intermediate. It just goes straight to the product. So do you guys remember where the OH goes? More substituted. More substituted. So it goes here. So notice how this bromine's here. If you recall, that uh, this piece right here would be the one moving around. So I would argue that the OH would then go on the end for the 1,4 product. It doesn't really matter in this example because it's, it's symmetrical, but it will in other problems. And I, I have a practice problem here. We'll change the alkene up a little bit and try to predict products. And I'm doing the same format as the previous one. This is the one two, this is the one four. Okay, let's go ahead and change this a tad. So you can probably guess that I'm probably not gonna give you one three beta diene. <laughs> uh, let's make this more complicated by putting this here. So now we got to think about, okay, where does that plus charge, uh, where does it go? We have a couple options here. Um, let's go ahead and do this with HBr first, and then we'll do the other ones. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and put uh, asterisks on locations I think might be potential uh, places for carbocations. And you, you essentially want to think about tertiary, right? So you, you might automatically think, okay, it might go here, it might go here. Is there anywhere else this carbocation might want to go? Probably here, maybe, potentially. So uh, which carbon, or like one, two, three, which one do you think is going to get the carbocation? Which is the most stable position? <clears throat> All right, so uh, if it goes to the third position here, it is tertiary, but it's no longer allylic. If, remember that when it comes to carbocation stability, resonance is, is the king. So you want to think about resonance too. If it goes on the left one here, it's, it, it's tertiary and allylic. So that is the preferred position. So I would make the argument here that that's where the bromine is going to go, because that's where the carbocation was. There. And then counting carbons, one, two, three, four. Let me have this piece. But there is our one, two product. <clears throat> and then one, four. Essentially, what you want to do is move the double bond over here. And then the bromine is now there. So. So once again, double bond is now here. And one two versus one four. And you would do a similar setup here if you did the same reaction with Br2, Br2 in water, et cetera. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Just to summarize, so you guys are all clear about what's happening here, the kinetic product, so kinetic, this was the one two. This forms easier due to having a lower energy of activation. So forms easier 
due to a lower, and I'm going to be specific here, delta G double dagger 2. So that is the activation energy of the second step is lower. <clears throat> and the reason why this is, <clears throat> excuse me, good goodness, you have a more stable intermediate or carbocation, but you have a less stable product. Higher energy product than the 1,4. And then you have your thermodynamic, thermo, which is also called the 1,4 addition product. This one takes more energy due to a higher, and being specific again, delta G double dagger two. Remember that's the energy of activation of the second step. And the reason why that is, there's a less stable carbocation, however, a more stable product. The way I would remember this is that I think in life in general, if you put more work into something, you get something better at the end. So in this reaction, you put more energy into it, you get a more stable product out at the end. You can use that to remember. All right, are there any questions at all about the one, two versus one, four addition? Uh, so there, there isn't any more, uh, more to it than this. Um, what I recommend doing is uh, practicing problems that have different types of patterns on the on the the double bond setup here. It's always going to be the setup of a 1,3-butadiene with other pieces on it, essentially. All right. 